The issue of online sexual predators remains a major concern for law enforcement and parents across the nation. Now, actor and Hollywood activist David Schwimmer is making us think about it a little more closely. He is the director of a hard-hitting new movie called Trust. It's about a 14-year-old girl who meets an online predator. Their relationship begins with just a few innocent keystrokes. Who are you talking to? I'm chatting, Dad. My friend Charlie from California. He's a junior and plays volleyball for his high school. Oh, a junior. Mm. Well, he's obviously a very smart kid. <sighs> LOL. Well. Laugh out loud, right? Nice one, Dad. <laughs> Plums. <laughs> Parent watching over my shoulder. David Schwimmer joins us this morning in the studio along with Himanshu Nigam, who's a former prosecutor of Internet Crimes Against Children. Good to have you both with us. Thanks for having us. Um, this movie, you know, people are so used to you probably from friends and, and comical roles, and this is a right. very serious, very important topic. What drew you to it? Well, I've been involved with this uh, great organization in California called the Rape Foundation uh, for the last 14 years, and I've been on the board of directors the last 10 and I've, uh, over the years, I've, I've met countless child victims of rape and sexual assault and their families and befriended some of the counselors there and members of the FBI that work to solve these crimes. And I was just really inspired by some of these victims and their families, their stories, mm -hmm. and uh, really moved by uh, the idea of trying to, trying to tell this story through, in particular, the lens of the father-daughter relationship where Clive Owen plays the father. And, and uh, this wonderful actress, Leanna Librato, plays the daughter. Yeah, and that's a, a, an angle we don't see as much. I want to touch on that in one second, but while sure. you bring up the parents, you know, it's interesting, because in that clip we saw, it seems like they're doing everything you're supposed to, everything you're told as a parent. You keep an eye on your kids, what they're doing online. You watch over their shoulder. You learn the lingo as she's teaching right. him there. But, but that wasn't enough in this film. Can it happen just as quickly and, and just as frightening? As, as we saw in that clip? Well, it can, but the biggest thing to take away from the movie, and, and David actually did a great job of putting Hollywood in touch and perfectly with the reality of what happens in these situations, and that is in this case, Annie is actually becoming an at-risk teenager. Her father's working too much, even though it appears that he's not. Her brother's about to go to college. She's not fitting in with the cool girls in the school. She wants to be on a volleyball team, and she's struggling. So what you see from an online predator perspective is, oh, hone in on that kid because that kid needs attention. And then they'll shower them with attention. And eventually their goal is to say, let's meet somewhere. And from Annie's perspective, she's not meeting a stranger. She's meeting a friend, in her mind, a true friend, a friend or a boyfriend. A friend that she met online. How often does something like that, though, this just going to meet a friend, how often does it turn into something like rape? Well, the stats are all different because a lot of times there's discussions on is it a stranger they're meeting, but in many ways it's like the real world. It's an adult who does this in the real world, and it's called grooming, in the exact same way they do it online, and vice versa is also true. So in that sense, you know, it's no different than being part of what's happening in today's world, which is it's another avenue for a predator to reach your children if they're at risk that's when you have to be paying particular attention. You, you brought up the parent, the fact that you're telling this story more from the perspective of the parent, which we don't often see. And this is, you know, these are muddy waters. Parents are, are trying to keep up, they're trying to navigate, trying to figure that's out what why, they're supposed to do. Yeah, that's why I wanted to make the movie. It's really about parenting in the age of technology, and it's, it covers uh, cyberbullying, which we're seeing more and more common, um, and uh, sexting, and uh, also the sexualization of younger and younger children in, in uh, advertising. So it, it really covers a broad, broad range of topics, um, but mostly it's about uh, trying to be a good parent today. And uh, I'm, I'm expecting my first child in two months, and I'm certainly growing more and more concerned about how am I going to parent, how am I going to limit what I call, you know, screen time. Um, how, you know, with kids always looking at one kind of screen or another, whether it's an iPhone, an iPad, a computer screen, a TV, uh, a game console. And instead of looking up and looking at people, yeah. we're, we're learning to socialize more like this into, uh, into a different kind of socialization. And I'm certainly concerned about that as a parent-to-be. Okay. So. 
reminds you the importance of talking to your kids. Yes. Which sounds so easy, and but, this, but... And that's the whole thing about just... We just want people to engage more in being a more present parent. Mm -hmm. If you don't know every friend that your child is talking to on Facebook, you should. Like, you wouldn't let them go... You wouldn't let, as Amy said, you wouldn't let uh, Sally go sleep over at someone's house that you haven't met. You haven't met the friend, you haven't met the parent. Yeah. So just make sure that you know who Sally's talking to. That's all. So, so beyond, I mean, knowing who your kids are talking to, knowing what they're doing online, is there anything else you can do beyond that? Hey, I mean, is, is there software that you can put in place to monitor your kids' activity? Is anything 100%? Well, it's interesting. Today's technology world, there's software for everything. And there is. You can monitor everything they're doing. At the end of the day, as parents, and I have four kids myself, we have no more excuses on throwing up our hands and saying, technology, I don't get it. What you have to do is say to your, your, your own kids, you are my best technology educator. You're in my house. Teach me how this world works. And while that's happening, have a safety lesson. It's very much like we do as parents in the real world. When I got a skateboard from my father, the first thing he said was, you're going to go down that hill, but make sure no cars are coming. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're going to be protected on your head. Watch out for this. Well, when you give FRAP that next device that you're going to give, whether it's the iPhone or some other fancy thing coming out, you have to have that conversation while that gift wrap is coming up. And, and there's plenty of spyware out there. You yeah. could, you know, the, uh, my point really is that you can tr tr try to take all these measures to control where your kids are going, but it's, gonna, it's impossible yeah. because if, if they're not going to do it at home, they're going to go on someone else's computer. Right. Now that every phone is or shortly will be a personal computer, you can't control. So you have to really improve that relationship. Yeah. And, have a relationship where the kids can come to you and say, this is what I'm doing, this is who I'm talking to, this is something weird that happened to me. Well, this is actually, and you know, watching things like this together, or at least talking about something mm -hmm. like this, if you don't feel your kids are ready to see the movie, it's a great way to get that dialogue going. Yeah. David Schwimmer, hey, hey, Himanshi, <laughs> great to have you with us. Sorry, hey, Thanks. Thanks for coming in. Thank Thanks. you.